Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be reviewing the brand new Emacs Tiny Hawk S. So let's go ahead and open up this little case. Actually, quite nice little travel case. It comes in with this fake carbon fiber pattern here, just to see what we get. So first off, we have the little Tiny Hawk. Have a little bag with some spare screws, rubber grommet for flip controller, rubber bands to hold the battery on, and a tiny little screwdriver. Um, we do have a 1S450 milliamp hour battery right there. We have our USB charger that can do regular and HV, 2S and 1S, plugs into USB. And then here we have some stickers and a spare set of props. And then of course we have this warning. So right off the bat, what's special about the Tiny Hawk S? This version can do 2S, as well as some other little changes. But mostly the biggest change is the 2S capability. So as you can see here, that you must change the PID and rate profile to the to number 2 for 2S and 1 for 1S if you're using that. Um, it does come with both batteries. You can see there is a 2S as well included. So that's just a little warning for that. And it's very easy. You can do it in Betaflight on your computer through the SpeedyB app or through the built-in OSD very easily. I'll go over that a little bit later. So that's what you get in the package, pretty simple. So let's just take a look at the quad. Remove this battery here, show it quick. It's a 2S 300 milliamp hour battery. So taking a look at the Tiny Hawk, we can remove this little lens cap. Very similar design to the original Tiny Hawk, this new S version. The shell looks identical as far as I can tell. I don't have a Tiny Hawk or a Baby Hawk, but from what I've seen online, it looks the same. However, they say it has increased durability, so I'm assuming they have um, adjusted the plastic mix. It does feel pretty durable in the hand, and overall, it feels really nice fit and finish and quality on this. On the bottom, you can see, as well as the spares included, these are the Avan little quad blade props that they changed to so that you are able to use turtle mode with this. Up top, you have your VTX button and a USB to plug into the computer. However, this does have smart audio, so you do not need to touch that button if you don't want to. The motors, if you can see, they all do plug right into this little all-in-one board, so it's very nice. If you do burn a motor, it should be a pretty easy swap. And taking a look at the board, you can see that nice big F4 chip on it, so it should have pretty nice performance. And in terms of the battery connector, it is not an XT30, but it should be perfectly fine. It is the sort of um, thicker wire with a thicker connector. So to be able to accept 2S, they actually, it's, it's a little interesting, they actually went ahead and um, these motors are supposedly all new. I think, I'm not exactly sure what size they are, maybe like 0802, I don't know, they're tiny little things. You see the prop presses right over them underneath there. But, I'm, but I believe they are 15,500 kV, so definitely a pretty high kV. So it should give us really nice performance on 1S, which is just mainly pushed towards. Um, and then if you want to go bonkers, 2S is there for you. It is nice that they include both, so you're able to try them out and see what you like better. And especially for a beginner, as you progress, maybe you can move up to the 2S later. So let's go ahead and get a weight on things. Let's see. Okay, here is the quad by itself. It's only 27.6 grams, so extremely light there. With the 1S battery, it comes up to about 40.6 grams. And then with the 2S300... It comes about 43 grams, so just slightly heavier. All right, so that was just a real quick intro for the Tiny Hawk S. Obviously, the uh, FPV camera and video transmitter are built and hid in there, as well as it is compatible with FreeSky D8 mode or D16 with telemetry turned off. But that's all built in internal there. I'm not really going to go over that too much. It's not that big of a deal. We'll have to see how this camera looks. So let's go ahead and see how this guy flies. All right, so here we have some indoor DVR with the Tiny Hawk S, and here I was flying it in 1S angle mode, so it was in self-level, and it originally comes set up with a 25 degree angle limit. However, I did eventually change mine to 35 degrees just to make it get a little bit more speed, but in terms of a beginner, I think 25 degrees is a good place to start at. I'm not gonna have too much speed to get out of control, um, but definitely you can still zip around with it. So for this flight indoors, I was pretty much just going all over the house, testing out the signal, how the camera looked, and just overall the flight feel. And on the 1S battery, it definitely was very easy control, and I was having a lot of fun. The camera is not the best. It's pretty much what you expect from these tiny little cameras. 
not great, but it's certainly not bad. Plenty enough to fly around with. So as the rest of this indoor footage plays out, you see I crashed a couple times, had no issues with durability so far, and you can see I used turtle mode various times in the clip. It does need a lot of stick input to get it to flip over, but I had every time it worked perfectly fine, so that was really nice. So I'll just let the rest of the footage play out, and then we'll take it outside. Alright, so here we have the Tiny Hawk S outside, and I am switching to the 2S battery now. You can see me going through the OSD. All you have to do is go to the PID profile, change it from 1 to 2, and change the rate profile from 1 to 2. And it does ship with the PID and rate profile set for 2S stock, so just keep that in mind. So just flying it around outside, it was a little bit windy, about 8 mile an hour wind for this little guy, so it's definitely about the most wind you're going to be want to flying it in. You can fly in more, but it's going to be a little hard to control. And definitely on the 2S battery, I was very surprised with just how much power it had, which makes sense for 15,500 kV motors. That is a lot of kV for these little tiny props on 2S. And as you'll see throughout this flight, I drained the 300 milliamp hour 2S battery very quickly. So you definitely get a big reduce in flight time. So as with the indoor, I'll just let this footage play out and then we'll sum up my thoughts at the end. Take it easy.
All right, so here we are back to finish up my thoughts on the Tiny Hawk S. And just real quick, I'll let me point out, I did actually do a line of sight test with this on 1S and 2S. I uploaded a separate video. It should have been live at the same exact time as this one. So there'll be a link down that description below. You can watch that before, after, whenever you want. If you want to check out how this guy flies line of sight, spoiler, very well. In terms of a beginner quad, I think they nailed it out of the park with just how protected it is. Um, you can see the props don't actually come too close to the prop guard, so when they when they hit stuff, they will touch the prop, but they're not going to destroy them. So that should really help with longevity. And overall, having the turtle mode is very nice. You crash indoors, you don't have to go get it. And with the 1S450 mAh battery, I was getting almost 4 minutes of flight time indoors. Not going crazy, but probably flying about maybe a little bit faster than a beginner would. So there's definitely a lot of nice flight time with these, as well as you can buy these spare for $8, so you can get 5 of them, and you can fly for quite a long time. In terms of the 2S flight experience, there definitely was a ton more power. Do not recommend it indoors, but for outdoors, it is a really nice step up. However, with the KV being so high on these motors for a 2S battery, it really did drain this 300 milliamp hour battery really quickly, about in less than two minutes almost if you're pushing on the throttle. So you need to be a little bit careful in that. And if you are looking into this for 2S only, I would recommend getting something a little bigger, maybe a 400 milliamp hour. Um, for the USB charger, it's it's okay. You know, it charges both HV and um, regular LiPos for the 2S. For the 2S, all you have to do is plug in the balance connector only, and then for the 1S, you just plug the main connector in over here. The regular ones, these always charge to HV, but these ones you can set to regular HV based on these little dip switches. I'm not a huge fan that it uses USB, but it is probably going to be really accessible to a lot of people. You could charge this off your laptop. But if you plug in six batteries here, I'm not sure how much current this could draw. So it might be too much for a computer USB port. Not quite sure what happened to them, but it is pretty easy and accessible for beginners to use. So in terms of the camera and VTX, for the camera, it was it was okay. It wasn't too bad. Not not the best camera I've ever seen for sure, but definitely not the worst when it comes to these tiny, tiny little cameras in there. Um, definitely good enough for a little quad like this. The VTX is somewhere shoved in there. I don't even know where the antenna is. I think it might come out here, uh, this gray thing. That might be the receiver antenna. I don't know, but I had decent video um, all the way up through my house, a couple floors up into the attic, as you saw. I was running clear view, um, but that's just because if I don't, my DVR will look like trash, even though it's not looking like garbage in the goggles. The Amway is just, for some reason, if I want to get good DVR, I need the clear view. So overall, from a beginner standpoint, I think the 1S flight experience really knocks out of the park. It was really steady and locked in. If you saw my line of sight video, I was really surprised when I took off in 1S just how stable it is. It actually looks like there's a little bit of inside curve to the motors um, and just with the stance and how tight the CG is with the props upside down and the battery sideways, it really does make it nice and stable even outside with a little bit of wind. And then for 2S, obviously, <laughs> if you saw my line of sight as well, you can go pretty crazy with this thing. But you just got to watch your battery. So yeah, that's going to bring us to the end of the review. If they keep the price point pretty similar with the original Tiny Hawk around $100, I think this is definitely a really nice buy. And they will probably be offering the same ready-to-fly kit um, that comes with the transmitter and their goggles for, like, I think it was $170, which is a really nice entry price uh, to get a beginner in with a really well-performing quad that they can definitely grow into. So yeah, there will be links down in the description below if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.